Hello and welcome back to Keys Schools. I'm Chris Scott and I'm the Tutor for Admissions and Outreach here at Keys College, Cambridge. This is a presentation I gave a few days ago at our open day uh, and I thought I'd give it again here on YouTube but shorten it quite a bit because I know you on YouTube are probably used to watching videos maybe 20 minutes long at a stretch. So I'm really going to try and race through uh, this presentation as quickly as I can and the idea of it is to well, really, I'm aiming at, it, at, at people applying this year, so I'm recording it in September 2020, and that's when it will be published. The application deadline for Cambridge is October the 15th. So for any of you who are in year 13, you're making your university applications now, and you're kind of on the fence about whether to give Cambridge a go, this presentation is for you, this video is for you, and I'm going to be trying to give you some reasons why, firstly, you might apply to Cambridge, then maybe why you might apply to Keys and then to tell you how you can do both of those things. So, as I say, I'm going to try and keep it short and snappy. Uh, as with any video like this about the Cambridge admissions process, the disclaimer is always, always make sure you look at the website, the undergraduate study website. That is the most, uh, always the most up-to-date place to look. Anything I say, especially with coronavirus at the moment, may go out of date. Uh, so don't rely just on what I say. I'm also, because I'm trying to go quickly for the YouTube format, I may well miss quite a few things out, but I'll do my best to be both comprehensive and uh, brief. So, why Cambridge? Well, as you may know, we have an outstanding academic reputation, both for research and for teaching. And the two are linked, um, as they are at any Russell Group University, where the people who are teaching you are also actively uh, engaged in research, uh, which is a real plus. Uh, we're consistently near the top of university league tables, and then we have a very broad range of academic courses. Now sometimes people say, um, oh it doesn't actually look so much like that, it looks like maybe you have a narrower range than some universities because you only see about 27 courses when you, when you initially apply. But many of our courses contain uh, lots of um, room to specialise later down the line because of something called the tripod system, which is the way courses work here, a fancy name for them. It's also the case that Courses start broadly and then, and then specialise in later years, but in those broad initial years you get plenty of chance to specialise because of something called the supervision system, which I'll come on to in a moment. Indeed, I'm coming on to it right now. Uh, and the supervision system, well, if there's, if there's one thing I think that is the real unique selling point of Cambridge and the thing that should really convince you to make an application, it's the supervision system. It's really fantastic. So in uh, all universities you are taught in lectures, and you're taught in seminars. So lectures, you might have about 100 people or 50 people. Uh, in a seminar, you might have 15 or 20 people and just one academic. In a supervision, which is offered at, at Cambridge and at Oxford, you might have a one-on-one, -on -one, so a chance to talk with a, a world-leading expert in their field about your work, direct for an hour with no one else in the room. It might be a two-on-one, it might be a three-on-one. And at Keys, because we have a lot of fellows, as I'll come on to uh, soon, we're, we're able to offer quite a few one-on-one -on -one supervisions, which is a good thing about Keys. Um, but as I say, that, the supervision system is the real unique thing, more than anything else, that if you're on the fence about, about Cambridge, I would think about that and what it's like to be taught in that way, that format of, of individual uh, and, and small group discussion, which really enables so much time to be devoted to your own individual process of, of learning, and supervisors adapt to that as they teach. Then we have superb facilities, not only extracurricular, you can see a few pictures there of our sports centre and our, our theatre on the slides, which are magically, hopefully, going to appear next to me as I talk, uh, but also we have a, a very good disability resource centre, we also have a fantastic careers service, which uh, is there for you not only whilst you're an undergraduate at Cambridge or a postgraduate as a student, but also for the rest of your life. So if you decide you want to change career as, a, as an old student of Cambridge in your 40s, whatever it might be, the careers service is still there for you, can give you advice and guidance, and that's a free service for your life. So I think that's a, that's a pretty unique thing that we, we offer. And then finally, the collegiate system. Uh, and we'll head straight on to the next slide as I talk to you about the collegiate system. So as you're sort of imagining my audience here is, is year 13, so you'll probably be looking at a lot of universities at the moment and thinking about which ones are right for you. And you'll probably have seen a, two main kinds of university, a campus university and a city university. 
So in a campus university, as you might have seen, everything is kind of together. So where you eat, your canteen might be right next to your department, which might be right next to the Students' Union building, which might be next to uh, where you sleep, your accommodation. So everything's on the same site. And there are obviously advantages of that. There's not much time uh, spent traveling from place to place. Maybe it feels very safe because you're not going out through a town or a city into public places. Some people might find that a bit claustrophobic and a bit bubbly as if you're never really getting out of the university life and environment or you have to make a sort of extra special um, effort on a, on a special day to sort of get out. Um, then you have city universities where the university is kind of scattered across a city or a town so maybe you're getting a bus for a few minutes to get from your lecture to your lunch and then you've got a bus to get home to accommodation or cycling or whatever and you're sort of going around town um, which again has real advantages in that it doesn't have maybe that slightly kind of claustrophobic university feel, uh, but you're spending a lot more time getting from place to place and maybe your experience can feel a bit more uh, scattered because you've got friends in different places and you're constantly moving from place to place and no one place perhaps feels like home. So on to collegiate universities. Well, you can best think of them as a blend of campus and city. Uh, so you get all the benefits of, of both. Um, so a college, uh, as I'll say in a moment, I'll just address these three photos that are on your screen. So in the top right you have um, Keys, uh, the lovely Keys Court there, you've got a department there, I think that's the Material Science Department, and then in the top left you've got the University Library. So, I'll come on to what colleges do in a moment, but first with university and departments very, very quickly. So the departments um, will set your course content. They'll do all the teaching that happens at other universities, lectures, seminars, practicals, projects, um, labs if you have them depending on your subject, and then they set your exams. Um, then the university, and sometimes as I'm kind of walking around town, you might get a tourist come up to you and say, excuse me, can you point, me, point the way to um, Cambridge University? And you have to say, uh, well, no, there, there isn't really one building which is Cambridge University, it's, it's kind of scattered around town in a mixture of colleges and departments and individual university buildings like the University Library we saw earlier, the Career Service. Um, so you won't encounter the university as such too much over the course of your degree, which may be a bit of a strange thing to get your head around, um, but basically at the end they award the degree and you, you graduate as a, as a student of Cambridge University. So that's all you really need to know about the university um, in this very brief presentation. And then I talked about careers advice as well. So now on to colleges, and as I said, a collegiate university, and there's more than just Cambridge, obviously there's Oxford, but there's also Durham, uh, there's Lancaster, there's Roehampton. Um, a college is, is like a mini campus, um, so it provides a base for students, as it says up there. Um, it's where you eat, it's where you sleep, it's where you do a lot of your socialising, it's also where you apply, unless you make an open application, I'll talk about that in a moment. So the colleges admit you, the students, uh, they look after your academic and pastoral care, again I'll say more about that. Uh, accommodation, dining and recreation, as, as I say, it's where you eat, where you sleep. They organise small group teaching, now if you are thinking about some of those other collegiate universities, um, that I mentioned just now. Oxford and Cambridge are unique in the collegiate system is that they also offer this small group teaching in, in the colleges which other collegiate universities don't and as I say that supervision system or the tutorial system in, in Oxford is, is a real uh, you know a selling point, a, a wonderful thing that, that these two universities offer. And then facilities for academic study. So every college, 29 undergraduate colleges uh, in Cambridge, they all have their own libraries, IT facilities and so on. Now I just said there are 29, univers uh, 29 colleges rather in Cambridge University and they're all fantastic uh, and there are great reasons to apply to every one of them. On this channel, uh, either uh, I or um, our school's liaison officer, Katie, who you've seen on the videos, will do a video about how to choose a college um, for, for next year's kind of admissions round. But quickly, I'm just going to talk to you about Keys because uh, I'm here to convince you why uh, you should be applying to Cambridge if you're on the fence and to Keys. Um, so I won't talk about how to choose a college in general, but obviously some of the things that I'm saying about keys will be relevant to, to all colleges. Um, so one of the first things that you might consider when choosing a college is how big it is. Uh, some people uh, really suit or, or feel like it would suit them to be in a small uh, college environment where maybe there's about 100 students 
Uh, it can feel very friendly, there can be a real sense of community, everyone's looking out for each other. Maybe you might be the kind of personality that thinks as well, well maybe everyone's going to know what I'm up to or maybe I want a bit more privacy. Um, equally in, there's a, in a large college, maybe 160, 170, 180 students, uh, you might feel, oh that's a bit big for me, I might feel a bit anonymous, maybe the sense of community might, be so, might not be so good. Now a real strength of keys I think is that we, we kind of blend the two. So we're a large college, we have about 160 uh, students per year and those earlier figures were this number of students per year so times it by three or three and a half to get the kind of total number of undergrads. So we're a large college, we have a large number of students but we're set around a very small, um, a beautiful three old courts, a small central base so lots of people coming through that all the time and we also have uh, a real emphasis on communal dining um, which I'll talk about in a moment, but that helps uh, to, to keep keys, uh, to, to give keys a real community feel um, as well as its um, large size. Then, as I briefly hinted at earlier, we have a large fellowship, uh, a large number of academics, uh, and that means that we can do a lot of one to one supervisions. Uh, a lot of your supervisions can take place in college, and that's very common throughout all the colleges, including keys, to go out to other colleges to, do your, uh, to have your supervisions. Um, but that needs to happen not so much, I think, at Keys because we have so many um, fellows and we also offer all of the subjects that you can study at Cambridge. Then superior accommodation for our studies, as it says up there. The accommodation is really fantastic here. Uh, we have uh, a lovely um, uh, site um, set across or set amiss, um, landscape gardens. Uh, it's called the Harvey Court site and that's where all the first years live. They all live together. Um, in ensuite, every room is ensuite. Um, a lot of the rooms have beautiful south-facing balconies uh, which students love to sort of come out on and, and socialise on. Um, great for kind of socially distanced um, outdoor socialising at the moment, no doubt. Um, and that's a really fantastic place to live and it's very close to uh, many, the vast majority actually of the arts and humanities um, faculties and departments, close to the maths department but at the same time only a sort of five or ten minute walk to the centre of town. So a lovely place to live. Then in your later years you can either live right in the, the very centre of town in uh, uh, various courts, the, the very old courts right in the centre of Quays, um, or just across the road uh, in the St Michael's Court site. Uh, and then there, there's also the chance as well as that to live in uh, kind of larger student houses to get that more uh, traditional um, university feel, the kind you see at where all the students live together in a programme like Fresh Meat or something like that. So I think at Keys we have a real, you know, everything you could want from, from Cambridge accommodation, you have the chance to experience it. We're based in the very centre of Cambridge, um, and I'll talk a little bit about this emphasis on communal dining. So a lot of colleges have something called a kitchen fixed charge where you pay a certain amount at the start of every term. And then that, that amount you pay up front then subsidises so makes your later meals that you then go and eat in the dining hall, it makes them cheaper because you've paid for some of them in advance. We do things a bit differently, so we just make you pay for all of them in advance, make you pay for about 30. Uh, and what that means is that you don't have to worry much about food, about how much you're spending, you just know every term you're spending that amount of money for about 30 meals at, at Keys. Your friends are very often going to be there, there's always new people to meet, as I say it really helps to foster that sense of community because there's always someone new to meet in the hall or people there, you're never kind of eating by yourself. But 30 meals is about half maybe of the meals you'll eat during a term, if we exclude breakfast. Uh, so that gives plenty of time for you to do your own thing, you don't need to feel bound to eat every meal in hall equally. And every uh, room has, is equipped with cooking facilities. Uh, either in a shared kitchen or, uh, or a kitchen very close to it that's just yours. Um, and so uh, there's a real blend again of being able to go out and socialise in hall, uh, the dining hall, or being able to, to have a small group dinner or just a dinner by yourself, uh, depending on how you're feeling. And then finally, of course I'm going to keep to time and I'm a, an English graduate myself, so I could go on and on about our stunning and Wellstock Library, you can see it there in the bottom right of the screen. It's really fantastic. It used to be a wing of the University Library, both the architecture and, and how great the librarians are at uh, not only being very helpful, but getting books in. If they don't have it, it's quite hard to find a book they don't have, but if they don't, they can get it in for you. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there, but we do have a fantastic library. So a couple of very quick slides 
just to give you a sense of some recent famous Keys uh, alumni, so famous old students. Um, obviously we have a very long history stretching back nearly uh, 700 years, so um, possible to, to find some uh, very famous uh, and important historical figures as well, including our founders, Gonville and Keys, but I'm just giving you a sense here of the, the recent ones. Um, and then a bit more about Keys. So we're absolutely committed to offering places to candidates of the highest intellectual potential, irrespective of background. So I can't emphasize that enough, uh, and I'll say this again at the end. If you're on the fence now because you think, maybe I'm not the, the right kind of person to, to make an application to Cambridge or to Keys, think again, because the, there is no Cambridge stereotype. If, if perhaps there was 50 years ago, um, it doesn't exist anymore. Cambridge is an increasingly really diverse place for the people from all sorts of different uh, backgrounds. So don't let that put you off for a second. Uh, and then, as is the case at, at all colleges, so this is really about sort of how college um, pastoral uh, support networks work, but also say a couple of specific things about Keys as I go. So you have a director of studies, and they're the person who kind of looks after your academic development year to year. Um, so they organise all your small group teaching, your supervisions. Uh, then you have a tutor, which is a bit confusing because it sounds like an academic post. Tutors are academics, but their role as tutor is not academic, it's everything non-academic. Uh, so if you have um, mental health concerns or financial concerns or whatever it might be, the tutor is there as your first point of contact. Um, so they may be able to offer some advice and to sort out your problem if it's quite small, but they're also there to direct you very swiftly to someone, uh, a professional, who can sort out your problem uh, if it's more serious. So, uh, you know, it's impossible to get lost uh, in a college, in a collegiate system, where in, in, univers in other universities it, it might be more easy to feel you're kind of slipping through the gaps or it's a bit more anonymous. Um, tutors will have maybe 30 or 40 or 50 students that it's just for them to look after. Uh, and you can't, as I say, slip through the net. Then a student's union, a junior combination room, that's what JCR stands for up there, and peer support. Uh, so there are all sorts of um, officers on the student's union, a BME officer, LGBT officer, women's officer, male welfare, female welfare, non-binary welfare officers, and so on. And also there's a college family system, uh, which means that you get when you come up as a fresher, as a first year, uh, you're assigned uh, a couple of college parents who uh, look out for you and sort of take you round and show you what Keys is like or what a college is like. It's very common amongst all the colleges, as I said at the start. So finally, physical and mental health and welfare. Um, we have two college nurses at Keys, one of whom is uh, exclusively concerned with mental health, so we take that very seriously. Um, and then financial support. We'll, we will do on this channel very soon a separate video about the Cambridge Bursary Scheme, which is really excellent. Again, I think this is something that perhaps uh, we don't, as, as a university, get out there enough. Um, and people sometimes talk about the fact that uh, other universities offer great financial support. Cambridge offers really excellent, almost unparalleled, I think, financial support in the Cambridge Bursary Scheme. Um, if, you, if your household income is £40,000 or below, uh, then you're offered uh, a top-up bursary on top of your student loan which goes up as that household income goes down. Um, I'm making it sound perhaps more complicated than it is and, and feel free to Google it and as I say we've got a video coming up as well. But basically the, the line, the, the short uh, summary of that is um, financial uh, background or financial means are absolutely no barrier to applying to Cambridge so don't let that put you off if you're worried about um, uh, paying for it. And then finally a wide range of extracurricular opportunities that we have at Keys. A large college, if you want to do it at, at, at Keys, you can, you can do it here. Um, so music, sport, drama, talks, um, you can see someone with what I hope is a cello and not a double bass, I think it's a cello. Uh, and then someone playing women's football and a show in college uh, on the pictures down the side. So there's lots going on. Okay, on to the second part of the presentation. I hope I'm keeping to time because if I don't and I go over 30 minutes, which would be you know, quite over long, given I'm trying to keep it to 20 minutes, but my camera will stop filming. Um, so I'm gonna maybe pick up the pace slightly. Uh, I should have done this with the clock sort of there, uh, but there we are. So what are we looking for? Um, we're looking for academic potential. 
and that's really the main thing we're looking for, we're not looking for anything extracurricular. Sometimes people ask me when I go out into schools, um, you know, what extracurricular activities can I put down on my personal statement? We're not looking for that. They can show good time management, but really we're just looking for your academic potential, nothing else. Um, we need you to satisfy any subject requirements, so different courses, as you might have seen if you've done some research on the website, will need different A-levels or different combinations of A-levels, and you need to have those. We're looking for a genuine subject interest, uh, motivation and enthusiasm. Now, that means a kind of real passion for the subject, uh, a real interest in it that goes beyond the school curriculum. And you can demonstrate that, um, well, firstly, you can cultivate it by doing extra reading, uh, listening to podcasts, watching documentaries, visiting museums in maybe more normal times, although some, uh, some museums are, are open, I know, at the moment at least, uh, if you pre-book. And you can show that to us in your personal statement and then at interview. Uh, we're looking for a good fit between applicant and course, which means that you've kind of done a bit of research about the course so you know uh, that maybe the economics course is quite maths based and you're, you're happy with that and you like your maths, whatever, whatever it might be. That's what we mean by good fit. We're looking for a vocational commitment where appropriate. So in medicine and veterinary medicine, a real sign that you understand what the life of a vet uh, or a doctor uh, is, uh, and you can demonstrate that through doing some work experience. Um, again, we can talk about in another video or answer questions in the comments down below exactly what work experience uh, would mean. It doesn't have to be um, uh, as maybe thorough or um, uh, at high, high level as some people might think. It might be as simple as just working in a, a GP surgery amongst a couple of other things. Uh, and then finally, the most important point I can make uh, on this slide is that we assess applications holistically, which is a fancy way of saying um, everything is taken into account together. No one particularly strong performance is going to make all the difference to your application, nor is one particularly weak performance on any of these um, criteria in terms of what we're looking for uh, going to make the difference. Now here you go, the application process. Um, as you'll probably gather, I could do a video you know, for 20 minutes just on this. I'm going to race for it really quite quickly now. Um, it's coming up in, in just three or four weeks, that UCAS deadline, which is the 15th of October. So you need to get your skates on uh, if you're thinking of making a, a Cambridge or a Deedon Oxford application because that deadline uh, is much later if you're not applying to, to Cambridge. So you need to choose your course and that's the most important thing when you're making a university decision, um, bar none, because the course is what you're going to spend most of your time, by no means all, but most of your time doing. So you need to make sure the course is right for you. And that's really how I suggest you choose um, if you're on the fence about um, universities. Then you choose a college if you're applying to Cambridge or make an open application. Um, I've talked a bit about how you might choose a college as I said in another video on it. You can make an open application which means you don't choose and you let a, a sort of uh, a random number generator essentially make the choice for you which is perfectly fine. The college that you end up with um, and will then interview you if you get interviewed doesn't know that you've made an open application so there's no real disadvantage to it. Um, but you know, given it's a random number generator, you might feel that, well, I might as well just pick randomly myself or semi-randomly. Then you need to check admissions assessment or test registration deadlines. I believe that's the 1st of October for the BMAT and the rest of the admissions pre-interview tests that we run on the 15th of October. But don't rely on my word for it because not only I might possibly be misremembering, um, but also those dates might change, especially this year with everything going on with the virus. As I say, um, or I'm about to say rather, currently we're expecting all pre-interview um, tests to take place in registered test centres. You need to get yourself registered uh, and you need to absolutely plan on that, uh, on that happening. Um, but that might change depending on the situation with the virus over the next few days and weeks. Uh, then your UCAS application, that's where you submit your personal statement and your whole application. That has to go off on the 15th of October or before. A week after that, we ask for something called the Supplementary Application Questionnaire, in which you provide us with details of your class sizes, any reasons why you haven't been able to study um, certain A-levels at school that you might have wanted to, or might have been um, beneficial to you, uh, such as further maths, for example, for a natural science or engineering application. Uh, at the same time, this year, we're running something called the COVID Educational um, Disruption Form, and that is the place to tell us about uh, any of the ways in which coronavirus has disrupted your education over the past few months. Along with that, there's also, this is the 22nd of October, is the deadline for submitting an extenuating circumstances form. 
So if you have serious extenuating circumstances, you want us to consider next year application uh, along with it, um, and they uh, are beyond educational disruption caused by COVID, um, then uh, a carer or your referee uh, or a doctor can submit an extenuating circumstances form on your behalf. You don't submit that yourself. Then we're up at number six. I said I was going to go through it quite quickly. You submit written work or take emissions assessment or tests. So uh, a lot of subjects, it all depends by, on college at this point and by subject. At Keys, uh, almost all of our arts um, uh, directors of studies, our arts subjects ask to see a couple of pieces of written work that you've done in school, recent written work um, with the teacher's markings on. Shouldn't be work that has been produced just for Cambridge, but in the normal course of the, um, the school term. Uh, and then we have some at interview tests as well, uh, which, like the interviews, are going to be remote this year. Uh, and uh, both of those you're going to take where you feel most comfortable. So it might be at home, it might be at your school, it's up to you to choose. Um, obviously, we prefer to conduct the interviews in person, uh, but this year, because of public health reasons, of course, it just doesn't make sense. So it's going to be remote, and we're doing our best to make that as smooth a process as possible. Uh, and if you are uh, an applicant who for some reason is not able to, to take an interview at home uh, because of technological disadvantage, whatever it might be, or at school because maybe your school doesn't have the facility to host you at the time we give you, uh, then let us know or put it in your um, COVID educational disruption form and the college you apply for will um, sort you out and find an alternative venue if we can. Uh, and then finally you get your decision in January, which I'll talk about in a moment. Quick slide then, what information do we use to assess applicants? Again, to stress that no part of an application is considered in isolation, all of it is taken together. Your academic record, so your exam results basically, your personal statement, your teacher's reference, then your performance in any admissions test uh, or assessment where it's required. And by the way, don't think, don't feel that there's a, a kind of minimum pass mark that you need in these tests. It is the case that successful applicants on average will receive a certain score, but again I can't emphasise enough that no part of an application is considered in isolation, so it's not the case that you need to be getting this mark in the BMAT in order to be considered um, full stop. Uh, then the written work uh, where it's required. Contextual information and data, this is really important, so this includes information such as time spent in care, the socio-economic characteristics of your area, uh, levels of uh, progression to higher education in your area, um, recent school history of entry to Oxford and Cambridge uh, and, and higher education along with uh, uh, average kind of school GCSE score and A-level score, we take all of that into account. Uh, and then finally the interview, if interviewed, we'll absolutely do another video on interview um, for this year after the 15th of October. We're looking to see how you think. We're looking to see how passionate you are about your subject. Um, again, could say much more and we will say much more, but I'll leave it there for this uh, quite quick video now. So rather amusingly, uh, I just recorded the last couple of slides and said, you'll see how good my internal clock is by how long this has taken. I think it's about 25 minutes. Obviously it was more like 35 because it cut off the last couple of slides. So I'm just gonna re-record them now. Uh, I did do it in one take, I promise. Um, so it's cut me off about halfway through this slide about um, A-level offers. As I'm saying, our offers, um, th these are the, the bottom line really, unless as I say, they're very serious uh, extenuating circumstances. Two A stars and an A for science and economics. Two A stars, one A, step one, one in parts two and three for mathematics. Uh, and an A star and two A's for arts and humanities. Uh, but if you, uh, if you are made an offer, don't think that this is absolutely what you will get. You may be made a, a higher offer than this. You may be made an offer which is linked to a certain A-level or combinations of, of A-levels. So this is not absolutely what Keys always makes. These are just our typical offers. And then it says at the bottom there, all applications are assessed still individually to take account of individual circumstances. So the outcome, you may be made an offer. Fantastic. Uh, it may be from the college you applied to or were allocated if you made an open application or from a different college as a result of your application being pooled. Uh, in my last take, I sort of slightly bodged this uh, or botched rather this explanation. Uh, I just said I could do a longer video about it. The pool is quite a complicated thing. It's quite a boring thing as well. It's basically just a fail safe 
which is there to ensure that if you uh, make an application for some reason to uh, a college for a subject which for some reason that year is a bit oversubscribed, um, you're not disadvantaged because of that. Uh, and uh, there may be, it may just be that that college couldn't take you that year. You go into the pool, all the other 28 colleges get a chance to look at your application uh, and they can then take you out of it. Um, so I can do a longer video, our school's liaison officer Katie can do a longer video on the pool if, if you want it. As I say, in a way it's quite a boring process, but it is there uh, to ensure fairness across our application system and across the colleges. Your offer may be conditional based on those um, A-level or equivalent grades. It may be unconditional if you've already taken your A-levels or equivalents. If it is conditional, in August the A-level results are published and then the conditional offers will be confirmed or sadly not confirmed if the grades aren't met. And then you may not be made an offer. Um, now, you really shouldn't be put off by the fact that obviously we can't take everyone. Um, don't let that put off, don't let that there. Don't let that put you off applying. There we go, I've got it out. Um, right through this video, I've been trying to convince people who are on the fence, and this is a really big thing that can put people off. Maybe they think, as I said earlier, uh, Cambridge isn't for them, isn't for people like them. I hope I've addressed that. Maybe they also think, oh, I'm just not good enough, Cambridge, for people right up here, and I, I could never uh, aspire to that level. Well, if your predicted grades, uh, uh, which you'll be getting at the moment, are looking like um, they're on course to meet our typical offer, then absolutely, why not give it a go? Um, you should be making an application if, if you think um, those grades are high enough. Um, and why not? It's only one out of five um, UCAS places and you never know. The biggest reason why people don't get into Cambridge is that they don't apply. We can only take those people who apply. Um, so if, if there's even the smallest part of you thinking, you know what, maybe I should, then I'd really encourage you to do it. Uh, and if, if nothing else, this presentation gives you, it's giving you information about Cambridge, about Keys, uh, about the application process, I want you to take away that kind of, listen to that voice that's saying, you know, maybe I should give Cambridge a go. Why not, um, is what I would say. So finally, a little slide about finding out more. You can ask questions in the comments down below, or rather sort of down there. Uh, you can have a look online at the university prospectus or order it uh, for a physical copy. Colleges have the same system, they have their own individual prospectuses and we at Keys have one. You can look at the Keys website, obviously all the college websites, but I've been talking specifically about Keys. Kai.cam.ac.uk, there's now a facility to chat to our current undergraduate students, uh, which is really great. Head over to study at Keys on the website, there's a little pop card that pops up on the bottom right and then click chat to our students and we've got 12 students from a range of different backgrounds and in different subjects. We're all really willing to, to answer any questions you have so do make use of that facility. And then you can email admissions at kai.cam.ac.uk for any admissions related questions. We're always happy to answer any questions uh, that come through on there. And for the most up-to-date information, as I said right at the start of this, always check that undergraduate study um, university website, uh, which is uh, sort of the gospel really, it's the place to go if you're in, if you're in any doubt, um, because the, the application uh, system is, is centralised, even though the individual colleges run, uh, take your application, uh, a lot of it is standardised rather across um, colleges, so the undergraduate studies website is a really great resource to look at for individual subjects and indeed in general. So that's it, I'm sorry I didn't quite manage it in one take because uh, my internal clock is obviously not very good and I overran, I'm sorry this is a longer video than I'd hoped for, it's going to be about 35 minutes, uh, but I hope I've kept your attention, I hope also I haven't skated over things too quickly, do please ask comments, um, ask comments, ask questions in the comments and make use of all the resources I've just been talking about if you're in any doubt about anything I've said or want more information. And finally, if you're in doubt about applying, as I say, if your grades are on course, your predicted grades are on course to meet those offers, go for it, absolutely do. Um, you won't regret it and it's a great process to go through even if you aren't um, successful in the end, but obviously uh, I really hope you are. Um, so that's it, there'll be plenty more coming on, uh, on this new YouTube channel, Key Schools. We hope you're finding it useful. Do subscribe um, to, to keep up to date with, with new videos as we produce them. But for now, I think I've, I've said enough. So take care, stay safe, and see you soon.